Okay, so for the, uh, the, f uh, the ending speaker for today, uh, for this hall, uh, please welcome Oscar Ziele. <laughs> and, uh, he, yeah, sorry, and he'll be uh, speaking about uh, one of the uh, most important issues uh, for, the, well, in this, I think in this, in this uh, company, one of the most concerns, top 10 admin uh, fails or mistakes uh, that they make. Thank you. Perfect. Nayat. <coughs> <coughs> Oh, okay. Uh, welcome, everyone. My name is Oscars. Uh, I'm an IT architect. Um, worked with IT for more than 10 years. Um, as IT architect, as a server administrator, and uh, worked also in the enterprise and also in the government and uh, passionate about security. So today I will tell top 10 IT admin fails I have seen in my life, uh, in my experience in a lot of companies. So the first one, admins will remember the config they did. You believe that? <laughs> no, no, no. Uh, they will forget it. Mm -hmm. uh, unfortunately, unfortunately, uh, I've um, searched the internet for some scientific research, research also, and uh, found out that, uh, as we see, uh, at the beginning when we do some stuff, we know 100% about it. Unfortunately, after a month, these on the bottom are days, we know only under 40%. After two months, we know, remember only below 20%. So how much we will remember after a year, maybe two, almost nothing. Okay. What if we will repeat what we did after two weeks and then after two weeks more? <laughs> it doesn't get even better. It's just a only around 35%, uh, maybe um, after two months, still not enough. So what, how can we solve this? Um, we need to write it some, somewhere, somewhere, somehow. Maybe in the internet, some internet page, or write it down on the paper like this, or, or take a photos of our configuration. But um, there's a lot of options, just some tips which I can give you. You can use it just a notepad or, or some internet sharing platforms like OneNote or, or, or Evernote, whatever. But the point is one, you need to fix everything down because when you do, do some installation or configuration, it's some custom stuff you do and you will definitely forget it in time. Okay, the next one. Uh, I've seen that uh, IT guys usually think, well, I know that this is bad, so probably everyone knows that. So all end users know how to filter spam and stuff like that. But unfortunately, they don't, again. And what, how can we solve this? We should... Uh, we should do instructions, a lot of instructions, like paper instructions, like on-site instructions, face-to-face -face education. Uh, we should 
make some tests to teach uh, how 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 see how to find a fake website. Uh, we can show how to see if uh, the web page they browse is encrypted or not, like they have SSL certificate or no. Um, we can teach how to filter spam, how to understand which is uh, some bogus mail or some which is valid mail. It's actually quite easy. Uh, also, we can teach to don't use a public Wi-Fi, or at least be caution of it, and stuff like that. We can also uh, on demand send emails when some threats are going on on the net, like. They're happening that some locky virus is going on. We can simply write three lines mail for all employees just to be informed about that risk to be caution. Uh, yeah, and of course we can test users. So the next one about monitoring. Some IT guys think, well, I installed the server and it's running and that's it. It's no no problem anymore. And if something will go wrong, users will call me and say, "Well, the service is down." That's true, but the g better would be if we would know that before users do. So if some site somehow goes down, I don't know, electricity, internet is going down, some whatever else error is happening, we will get some message, SMS or mail or whatever. And we can use some monitoring software. Uh, I prefer Zabbix, but that depends on whatever you like. These are the most popular, but there are also a lot of more of them. And you can monitor everything you have connected to Ethernet, physical servers, virtual servers, applications that run on the virtual servers. Also, you can manage the performance monitor to see where's the short hole, where's the problems getting. You also can monitor all network device. So actually everything you have. And after that, you can sleep well. Then some everyday hygiene. So we should still create a couple user accounts. Like uh, all IT stuff have some advanced permissions, not like typical users. So, but usually they uh, do log in with the same admin administrative account in their workstation. They have mail attached to the same administrative account. That's not actually really good because maybe um, mail can, can be hijacked and then actually all systems that connected with it also hijacked. So the better I would recommend to create just two users, one for using computer, just like mail, browsing, internet, writing documents and stuff like that. And the second would be administrative account which you use for managing softwares or, or switches or stuff like that. And again, same thing, use traceable accounts. Just username admin with password ad admin 123 is not enough. You never know who, who used that and why. So the next one. GPOs. GPOs are the typical Microsoft Active Directory part, and you could uh, s set passwords for all of the c accounts on the all computers in the enterprise. That sounds cool, but unfortunately, if we think about, it, we can set password in the GPO, so the computer would set up the password for all of the computers in our enterprise. So that means that that computer should have be able to read this password, which we write down. But that's actually mean that if I sit next to that computer, I can get this password also. 
And on the internet also, there's a lot of scripts that you can get all passwords that stored in the GPO with no problems. So using uh, GPO to split pa to share passwords around the network is a really bad idea. Don't use that. Oh, this is my favorite. Usually, uh, I see enterprises uh, we have strict policy that uh, everyone should change password about every 90 days or, or 180. But what about admins? Admins, well, I'm admin. I don't need to change a password because I can check this checkbox. But it's really, really bad. And actually, the worst is that I've seen that when an internal audit is coming, then they take out this checkbox, change the passwords, and after audit, well, okay, we have a year of free time now. Let's put it in again. So don't do, don't do that. Oh, this also is nice. Usually we do some stuff at the computer. After we complete our job, we go to the coffee or whatever we go. And let's keep our computer locked. Because, it, because if we don't, someone can see, come, do whatever they, they want with our computers. Uh, we can set the GPO to lock screen for us automatically after 10 or 15 minutes, but that's still 10 or 15 minutes. So better is to lock screen when we go away. Then we will be sure that no one is using our computer. Well, the next one about firewall. If we implement some, some new software or, or hardware mostly, make sure that we open just only these ports which we do need for functionality. Okay, if, it, if it's some web server, open only 80 port, port TCP 80. If it's also need a SSL certificate access, okay, 443 also, that's it. You don't need to allow like MySQL port open or, or, or any other. Okay, about Wi-Fi now. Recently, there's a lot of Wi-Fi standards, uh, starting from uh, VEP, then the new one, v VPA, and the second version of them. Well, the, there's a set of colors which we should use and which we definitely should not use. Like uh, the red ones should be forbidden at all because they're totally not secure. The yellow ones, it's, it's, it's okay, but still should not recommend. And the green ones is okay. TKIP, actually it's not recommended because it's a quite old encryption algorithm and if it's possible, better to use AAS. So it's m quite modern encryption algorithm with a 256-bit key length. Well, also, uh, speaking about the Wi-Fi, we should not use uh, VPS, you know, that button on the Wi-Fi so that we click and get the password automatically. Why not? Because if we put this button, then the password is being sent on the Wi-Fi publicly av available. So if, if sw someone traces us, listens <coughs> our network, then it also will get this password. Uh, if you have some enterprise, you can uh, use this uh, radius authentication. That means that uh, every user have, uh, have this own username and password. Uh, not like uh, the uh, shared password in the first one. Uh, I would recommend to use this password at least 12 characters long so it keep it secure because nowadays we have a strong computers and a lot of computing power so it should be sa safe still okay now about spam it's hard to fight spam 
uh, in this presentation I wrote about three options how to fight spam and this is uh, one of them how to fight just uh, to add your mail, s mail server to check the incoming mails from the um, black hole lists uh, the way how it works actually quite simple you just have to add just one line uh, to your postfix configuration or, or just if you have exchange also one line only and it will check your mails incomings with the blacklists uh, there's actually at the internet a lot of publicly available blacklists you can find those who fit your needs and uh, it will get better so the next way how can we spy fight spam is use uh, gray listing it's uh, actually means that your server will in the beginning reject your mail and accept it only after a couple of minutes 10 15 something like that there's uh, the bad thing about this if that's mean that if the sender will send the first mail it will arrive to you later than it should be uh, there's some opinions that uh, that is saying that this is bad actually to use uh, gray listing because it's fluids the internet actually because the same email need to be sent a couple times not only one at the first time but still it keeps your mailbox clean from spam as we can see here it's a lot of impact and the third one sender policy framework that uh, the way how it uh, filters spam is quite simple actually uh, sender sends an inc incoming mail to your mail server your mail server checks uh, SPF records into the public domains DNS server and if it's valid it's accept the mail and send it to the receiver that's mean that the sender are saying from which IP addresses uh, he will send mail and if it if somebody else sends mail from another address then it will reject it so these three uh, three two option three options will I would say take off 90% of spam so it's quite effective so about the malware again three tips first of them cut down user permissions to the minimum possible like typical accounting users should not have administrative permissions on their computer the second thing use software restriction policy simply does it does mean that uh, it not allow you execute any file that is not in allowed space like would say you cannot execute exe file or some installation from your flash drive compact disk CD uh, network locations desktop or whatever so you download from the internet some file you would like to execute some installation game torrent whatever and you cannot do that it's allow only you to execute files only in program files windows and some other uh, folders which you define as a safe place and the third one you can uh, shut down Windows script host uh, service that allows you to keep safe from locky viruses because locky viruses uh, spreads through the macros infected word files or Excel files but um, shutting down the script won't allow you to run any macros files so let's keep you kind of safe uh, unfortunately if you have some macros files for your work needed this doesn't work for you because it doesn't work also for you these macros and again patch patch and patch again how many of you think you have device at office that should be patched a lot of actually 
uh, if we count all physical servers, virtual servers, end user computers, storage devices, network device, we have something about 20 different items that we need to patch and search for patch and for them in, into the internet. Actually, a lot. If we have some mid sized enterprise, probably one employee can all day, every day, patch something. But it's important. But if, if, because if we don't, we are under risk. So here we can see a washing machine connected to the Wi-Fi. So if it's connected to Wi-Fi, then we should patch it. And this is uh, some demo. Now they're sending the same sort of attacks remotely, and I have no idea what they might do. He's going as fast as I've seen him, so. So first we're gonna turn the fan on him. Yeah, let's turn the fan on, see if he even notices. All right, all the, something just turned on, all the fans and AC and stuff. I didn't do that. The trick started small. Oh my God. There's a picture of Charlie and Chris in They're hijacking suits. cars. It just appeared on the dashboard. But as I drove down the interstate, things started getting unpleasant and very loud. Perfect. I can't turn it down. Conditioning is blasting, the music is blasting, and I can't see anything because of the windshield wiper fluid. Okay, do it. Do it. Kill the engine. So we're killing the engine right now. It says park and then actually can't accelerate. I stomped on the gas, but the Jeep slowed to a crawl. Okay, so this video actually is quite old, it's uh, from 2015 when two guys hacked uh, the car. Uh, what can we learn from this? <laughs> Don't buy Jeep. <laughs> Don't buy Jeep. But actually this case is already patched so we can buy Jeep now. But we can get the idea that patching is actually really, really important thing. Uh, in this case they also show the case how can they remotely disable the brakes of the car. So... But didn't they hack the, uh, patch the Jeep as well? I think Jeep, yeah. I think what, that was one of them. Jeep and uh, the... Th this is a Jeep case. No, no, but didn't they uh, hack the patched version again? Oh, I don't know. I don't know. Maybe. Actually. They always do, but then they <laughs> patch it again. They patch <laughs> and crack and patch again. <laughs> Okay. okay, so that's mean that actually if we don't uh, work as uh, IT administrators and don't patch at work, we should do patching at home. And uh, number two, <laughs> backs up, backups are for pussies. <laughs> yeah, um, well, actually that time is long, long far away and now I hope that we all do make backups in any way we, ha we do but we should do them manually automatically enterprise or or whatever so in the beginning we should do some regular backups whatever they are once day or once week or once month maybe it depends on your business and uh, definitely we should do some cold backups because there are some may, may, maybe some major issues like some building uh, errors or, or <coughs> breakdowns that our data center and backup data center maybe also can be not available. So it's not quite hard to put your all systems into one hard disk drive and put in some bank accounting locker or safe and it will be okay. Mm -hmm. And it's actually not expensive because uh, eight terabyte hard drive for nowadays costs something about 300 euros, something about. Uh, for backup, we can use just, see if we are a small company, we can use just 
typical commands like in Windows it could be a robocopy command just one line and it will do the backup <laughs> if we are on uh, Linux machine we can use rsync put the line in a cr cron tab one line only and it will do every day or or every week a backup of your system and the same thing about the databases also if you have uh, Microsoft MySQL database or Microsoft SQL database they also are possible to schedule a backup and it's actually quite easy and gives you also easy to sleep at night uh, if you are quite big company and you can afford uh, enterprise backup levels they are even better because they can uh, do a backup of uh, all virtual machine or physical server so it's easier to recovery it makes some point and uh, I would recommend to do backup a lot and hope that you will never use it and the uh, last one about encryption some of you may, may think that uh, encryption are only for banks or, or some financial companies but actually it's wrong nowadays it's uh, really easy to implement so let's say if you have some office separated physical locations use IPsec or some kind of encryption to cipher data between offices uh, well n and nowadays the minimal key length should be use such kind of key lengths not not smaller because it's not any more secure like a symmetrical key 256 asymmetrical key 2048 it means a uh, little of Hellman group number 14 in some routers it should be like that well the hashing also you should use SHA 256 well if your employees are connecting uh, outside office to your office applications you should use any kind of VPN also to encrypt connection all your uh, storage data hard drives, hard disk drives on the flash drives on laptops tablets PC whatever also should be somehow encrypted if there are PCs, there's actually quite possible that somebody will lose it or steal it. Uh, about mobile device management, also is the same thing. You should also keep some password on it or, and encrypt it. Uh, nowadays, has been reported about three, 13,000 mobile devices lost every year in Latvia. So somebody is finding these devices and maybe using the information that is in there. Uh, about web browsing, use SSL connections everywhere where possible. Just to add, remember to add these uh, flags to not use SSL version 2 and version 3. So there's uh, still is uh, TLS 1.2. And as a colleague in other presentation told that next year there will be TLS 1.3. And yeah, the certificates are also uh, possible to get for free. Uh, however, mostly they are for it's able to buy them, but still prices are reasonable. So use SSL or, or TLS encryption certificates. Thank you. Any questions, maybe? Any questions? Well, uh, I, I have one. What is the most popular of these 10? What is the most popular uh, uh, that we all make? Backups and encryption. Really? Yeah, seriously. I thought it's going to be the, you know, the loose, loose lips sink, sink ships kind of thing, no, but no. no. Thank you very much, Thank Oscars. You. Thank you. It's been a pleasure. Thank you. Uh, would you like to, before everybody leaves, would you like to, uh, uh, we have two, these, these will stay for you. That's a little something from that security solutions. Thank you. Um, 
Would you like to give out the last two invitations for the after party tonight? Well, yeah. Just maybe uh, one question from uh, from your presentation or, or before that? Zauk. <coughs> Well, what was the recommended key length for symmetrical or asymmetrical keys? Anybody remembers? Well, 256 for what? Symmetrical or asymmetrical? Asymmetrical, that's correct.